I'm Dr. Joe Esposito, and welcome to our podcast, For the Health of It. Remember to subscribe to our podcasts, and I'll help you naturally get well and stay well. The information presented on this program is not intended to take the place of your personal physician's advice, and it is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Discuss this information with your own physician or healthcare provider to determine what is right for you. Are you suffering needlessly? Dr. Joe can give you advice on how to naturally get well and stay well. Dr. Joe Esposito. This week is a topic I get so many questions about. I want to talk about all these fad diets that are everywhere. I was going to say crazy diets, and not always crazy. Some of them have some validity. So we're going to talk about the pros and the cons of each one and what really works. So let's start with everything you need to know about the ketogenic diet. This is the one when I, I, I do radio shows as well and other TV shows, and I always get a question about what about the ketogenic diet, Dr. Joe? And it was hot for a while. It's kind of fading out now as things do in life. But I want to cover the ketogenic diet, how it works, what the theory is behind how it works, what's good about it, and then what you might want to know that could be bad about it. And then we're going to cover a couple of other ones and then what really works, the, the a- options that actually do work when it comes to dieting. And I don't like the word diet because diet, by definition, is a short-term thing. We want to do a lifestyle change. So we're going to talk more about not necessarily short-term, but long-term. So ketogenic diet plan can be good for something called the mitochondria. Now, the mitochondria, these tiny little energy set packets in your cells. When I went to college... They said, you know, what does the mitochondria do? And you said it's the, uh, the, energy, the, the energy house, so the, the energy producer of the cell, and you got the, test, the question right. So the mitochondria is the part of the cell that actually generates energy. Every year, more and more people suffer from chronic and debil- debilitating illnesses in just about every corner of the world, and statistics of obesity-related deaths are steadily increasing. And here's the thing. We have first-world problems. And one of the first world problems we have is we have diseases of excess. What that means is we have too much of something, and that's what causes the problem. So as we go through this, as we go through today's show, we're going to talk about less of everything. And you're going to be amazed how much better you feel, how much money you'll save, how you lose weight, how your energy will increase, you'll probably increase your life expectancy dramatically. We have too much of everything. So an inappropriate diet... Uh, can really screw things up. Now, if you have an inappropriate diet that has minimal fat, uh, excess carbs and sugar, and excess protein, that's largely to blame for this growing epidemic of disease. Now, the ketogenic diet is a dietary approach that focuses on three components. High consumption of healthy fats, moderate intake of high-quality protein, and minimal amounts of carbohydrates. Now, when following a ketogenic diet, your body becomes accustomed to using healthy fats as its main fuel source. This causes the liver to produce high amounts of something called ketones. Now, ketones are water-soluble fats, and they burn instead of carbohydrates. So what happens is if you're eating a regular diet, your body takes sugar, any type of sugar, and converts it into glucose. Glucose is the type of sugar your body uses. Glucose then goes into your blood, and it floats around. The cells take in glucose and use it as fuel. The way the cells take in glucose is they use something called insulin. You've probably heard that word before. So insulin, when you eat sugars released from your pancreas, goes into the blood and it goes to the cells and acts like a key. It goes into the cell and opens up the cell and allows the cell to accept glucose. If you eat too much sugar and it's converting into glucose, the cells are being bombarded with glucose. And the cells eventually say, listen, I can't take any more glucose. It's messing me up. Clogging up, the junk gunking up the works. And so it resists the body's insulin from opening up the cells. The insulin's like, come on, let me in. And the cell's like, uh-uh, uh-uh, I'm not going to let you open me up. That's called insulin resistance. Over time, that's called type 2 diabetes. So if you eat too much sugar, you have too much insulin, the cells become insulin. In the body, it's called type 2 diabetes. In the brain, it's called type 3 diabetes, also known as Alzheimer's. So when the brain uses glucose as a fuel, eventually it becomes resistant to the insulin opening it up, and the brain isn't getting any fuel, and so the cells can't work, the mitochondria in the brain cells can't produce energy, and you have uh, type 3 diabetes, or the brain just can't function, and you start forgetting things. So with the ketogenic diet, you stop putting glucose in the body, the body uses a secondary fuel called ketones. Instead of glucose not being around, there is no sugar, now it starts using ketones. So here's some of the claims of the ketogenic diet. This is what they claim it does. They claim it improves weight loss. 
Now, in a ketogenic diet, the intake of non-fiber carbs is restricted so that your body can access and burn healthy fats and fuel. Again, we're cutting the carbs out of the diet. This results in increased weight loss and particularly useful for obese people. Does it work? Yes. I'm going to give you some reasons you don't want to do it and how you can actually incorporate it if you want to. Lower risk of cancer. When you go on a ketogenic diet, cancer cells are robbed of their primary fuel source, which is what? Sugar. And that eventually caused them to starve to death. Once again, I'm not making cancer claims. This is what the ketogenic diet is claiming to do. Decreases risk of chronic inflammation. When the body burns glucose for energy, high amounts of reactive oxygen species, it's called ROS, and its secondary free radicals are then produced. Now, free radicals are like Pac-Man, waka, waka, waka. They eat through things. And so when you produce a lot of these free radicals, they're attacking and eating through the cells and the DNA and the mitochondria. And so you want to reduce the amount of free radicals produced. So as you do this, ketogenic diet claims, uh, it may cause inflammation. If you have this, it can cause inflammation and premature degeneration. By eliminating the carbs from your diet and food consumption, that allows the body to burn ketones, which produce less of these fr uh, secondary free radicals in the ROS, thereby decreasing your chance of developing inflammation. Again, sugar causes inflammation is what that boils down to. Adopting a ketogenic diet might help you lower your insulin levels because the body, again, no longer burns glucose for fuel. Rather, it burns healthy fat, so your body doesn't produce as much insulin. Foods that should and shouldn't be eating when following a ketogenic diet. First off, make sure you're eating real organic foods. This is a key because people say, I'm going to go on a ketogenic diet and I'm going to suck down all these fats that I can and maybe you'll lose weight, yes, but it causes severe long-term damage. And this is where I'm very concerned. So if you're going to do this, whole foods, organic foods, very important. Best to steer clear of processed foods and food products that contain excess amounts of sugar, starch, trans fats, these are the bad fats, since they obviously won't do your health any good. You can be sucking down uh, bad fats, and it's a fat, but again, what do we say? It's a good fat we want to put in our body, not a bad fat. Also avoid the foods that contain high amounts of carbohydrates, such as milk. Milk is a big, it has a lot of sugar in it. And this can cause you to consume more than the allotted amount of carbs that you're allowed for a day. So you really want to stay away from the, the, the dairy products because dairy products have something called lactose, which is a sugar. Anything that ends in O-S-E is a sugar. Lactose, glucose, fructose, maltose, galactose, these are sugars. So lactose is a sugar. Again, avocados. Okay with avocados on a ketogenic diet. Coconut oil. Raw, and if you're going to do coconut oil, it's got to be raw or, or, or organic uh, extra virgin uh, coconut oil. Raw nuts such as macadamia nuts and almonds. Macadamia nuts, by the way, have omega-3 fatty acids in them. Pretty cool. Fun fact. I was in Hawaii one time and I learned that. Almonds. Okay. They're low in carbs and they're higher in fat, so they're okay. If you're going to eat animal products, and I don't think you should. If you ever listen to my shows, you know I'm not a big fan of animal products. But if you're going to eat them, I'm also a realist. I understand you're not going to do everything I say. They have to be organic, grass-fed or animal products. Organic eggs, grass-fed butter. Again, if you're going to eat animal products, I strongly recommend you do organic only. I prefer not to eat them. I haven't had an animal product in well over 30 years. That's okay. I understand you don't have to be like me. I'm accepting of that. But if you're going to do animal products, you want to do organic. Because non-organic animal products... You run a risk of getting things like steroids, chemicals, hormones, antibiotics, pesticides, herbicides, tranquilizers, genetically modified food that the animals are fed. Higher levels of something called omega-6 fatty acids. If you take organic meat and non-organic meat, the non-organic meat or what we call conventional meat is going to have higher levels of omega-6 fatty acids. Omega-6 fatty acids cause inflammation. Now, as a chiropractor and a pain management expert, my team of doctors, our job is to help get you out of pain and get you well. And if we gave you the best chiropractic care in the world, and I think my team does, they're pretty amazing, and you get the best chiropractic care in the world, or the best medical treatment in the world, or whatever, best physical therapy in the world, and you're eating a diet high in omega-6 fatty acids, it's going to cause inflammation and be counterproductive. That's why in our offices, we work on the nervous system. We work on all the joints and the bones and the muscles. We work on the digestive system. Because if you're not breaking down your food properly, that can cause inflammation as well. And how do you know you're not breaking down your food? Do you have acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas, bloating? Those are signs you're not digesting your food properly. And in many cases, the stomach will push up against the diaphragm. And when it does, you're not digesting food. It passes into the small intestine from the stomach, partially digested, where it causes an inflammatory reaction. 
that inflammatory reaction can go systemic. What that means, it goes through the whole body and that can cause pain. So you want to bring down the inflammation by fixing the digestive system, fixing the nervous system, and then getting you on a good diet. So the ketogenic diet also involves consuming high amounts of fiber, preferably from green leafy vegetables, things like broccoli, spinach, kale, parsley. We did a show the other day on organic and non-organic foods. What needs to be organic? Kale is one of those things that need to be organic, okay, because it has a lot of pesticides. Foods that are rich in antioxidants are recommended as well, as long as they don't contain high amounts of sugar. So years ago, somebody came to me and said, Dr. Joe, what would you consider the world's best supplement? And I said, if somebody could take fruits and vegetables and put them in a pill, that would be ideal because that's the source of your nutrients. Fruits and vegetables are the best source of nutrients and antioxidants, which goes well with all diets, including the ketogenic. And so we created something called Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. It's the minimum amount of nutrients you should be eating every single day. It's two powders. I take a scoop of each. I mix it with coconut milk, almond milk, water, and I drink it at least once a day, sometimes twice a day. If I have a big day, if I'm going uh, hiking, if I, if I got a bunch of radio and TV shows I got to do, got a hot date, I'll go ahead and take a double dose of Super Greens and Essential Source. And that stuff is like off the chart. I don't know how anybody gets through their day without it. And when we make it, we take the sugar out. So Super Greens and Essential Source, which I believe everybody should be taking, is excellent for going to a ketogenic diet. Okay? Now, it's important to note that healthy, high-fat foods are small in terms of the volume even though they're high in calories. So we said uh, this ketogenic diet has a lot of fats in it, but small amounts because they're high in calories. So don't get confused when you see vegetables and that still take up a large portion of your plate if you're going to do this ketogenic diet, mostly vegetables. You should switch to a cyclical ketogenic diet once your body becomes accustomed to burning fat for fuel. Long-term ketosis can be unhealthy. So if you're doing it for a long period of time, your body's burning ketones, that's not good. When the ketogenic diet first came out, it was the greatest thing that ever happened. You did it, you lost weight, it was wonderful. Yes, now we're finding if people are doing it long term, you risk health issues, including damage to the heart. So this is why it's a diet, not a lifestyle. You can make it a lifestyle if you want. I mean, people eat a bad diet every day, but this is the, I don't consider this a healthy long-term diet. So before you commit to this major lifestyle change, it's important to note that may be, uh, it may cause several undesirable side effects at first. Things like bad breath, short-term fatigue, frequent urination, digestive problems, even hair loss. So don't forget to evaluate your body to figure out if you're consuming enough nutrients to meet your daily needs. So this is where you have to listen to your body. I can't do caffeine. If I do caffeine, I get a blazing headache. I can't do monosodium glutamate. I get a blazing headache. So even though somebody might say, well, Dr. Joe, on a ketogenic diet, you can do coffee, I can't. So listen to your body. Listen to what it says. Uh, I'm, I'm a vegan. I like Asian food. But if I have Asian food with a lot of monosodium glutamate in it, bam, blazing headache. So even though it might be okay for the general public, you have to listen to your own body. I like Thai food. But many times Thai restaurants use uh, fish sauce. And fish sauce has monosodium glutamate in it. So you're on your ketogenic diet and you're going to go have either, you know, I'm not doubt they're going to have organic meat or organic tofu there, but let's say you have meat or tofu and vegetables and you're eating it, gosh, you feel great, bam, you feel awful afterwards. It might not have been the diet. It might have been the fish sauce, which contains monosodium glutamate. So whenever I go to a, 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 a Thai restaurant, and even Chinese restaurants that use monosodium glutamate, I will say, you have to promise me there's no fish sauce in here. If there is, I will get violently ill all over this table. Now, that's not true. I lied. Okay, but... You got to tell them that because then they're serious. They don't want you throwing up on your table. And so hopefully they're going to say, oh, well, you know what? Let me check with the chef on that. Oh, you know what? That, that sauce is pre-made already. It does have fish sauce in it. Even though five, two minutes ago, they promised me there was no fish sauce in there. So always, and even if you, you, know, if you don't care about your health, don't get the fish sauce in there. Anyway, the food tastes better without the fish sauce because you can taste the other seasonings and you don't have that violent reaction. No one does well on monosodium glutamate. Some people are worse than others, but you can't have that much concentration of glutamic acid. Glutamic acid is an excitotoxin to the brain, and it can actually cause your brain cells to fire faster than they're supposed to and burn out your brain cells. So once again, everything looks good on paper until you start getting to the specifics. So be careful with this ketogenic diet uh, because it can cause some uh, damage short-term. I'm gonna talk about the short-term effects and then the long-term effects. Let's talk about some of the hidden dangers. 
of the ketogenic diet. The keto diet promises this quick rate loss and more. It's going to be great for your cancer and it's going to be great for your heart. But there are negative side effects that n nobody seems to talk about. If you're promoting this, you don't talk about the bad stuff. I'm going to talk about the bad stuff that happens. Even some serious health consequences for those who are unaware. Why do you listen to the Dr. Joe show? So you're aware. Keto, the keto flu, it's called. The keto diet is an ultra-low-carb, high-fat diet that restricts carbohydrate numbers to about 20 or 30 net grams of carbohydrates a day. What's a net gram? Take the sugar that you eat, look at the food content, and look at how many carbohydrates you have. Okay, it has 50 grams of carbs. Okay, that's a lot in a serving. But it has 25 grams of fiber. So you take the total carbs minus the fiber, and that's your net carbs. So if something has 50 grams of carbs and 25 grams of fiber, it's 25 net carbs. But again, on a keto diet, you're looking at 20 to 30 grams of carbs a day. That's the equivalent of a single piece of fruit or half a bagel. That's not a lot for a whole day. So when you cut your carbs, your body, which is your body's preferred source of energy, you require your body to suddenly shift to, to fat as a fuel. This raises blood levels of ketones and puts you in a state of what they call ketosis, hence the name the keto diet. So ketosis is when your body is running on ketones. Once this shift occurs, you're probably going to lose weight. But you may also experience the negative side effects. This is commonly caused, like we said, the keto flu. Uh, and it's a very real side effect as the body transitions from the ketogenic, from the regular diet to ketogenic diet. You might have fatigue, brain fog, dizziness, insomnia, common symptoms like the regular flu. You're going to feel awful in many cases. And people say, I feel awful. So again, it's a side effect. I'm not a fan of the ketogenic diet, by the way. It's okay to cut out the carbs. I agree with that 100%. And it's okay to eat better foods, but I'm not a fan of this. I'm just giving you information as to how it works. Low blood sugar. Once ketosis is established, many people experience a more stable blood sugar levels. But in the process of getting there, you start to drop your blood sugar. Low-carb diets can be, uh, can be an effective way for people with type 2 diabetes to handle their glycemic control, which is how much sugar is in the blood. And carb monitoring has long been thought to be an effective way to control blood sugar, although one study concluded low-carb diets are not necessarily a better long-term strategy than other diets. So again, it's pros and the cons. Anecdotal evidence abounds for people with type 2 diabetes who have used a keto diet to stabilize their blood sugar and were able to quit taking their diabetic medication. Here's the thing. I was a TV consultant for another station many years ago, and I remember doing a report, and a study came out, gosh, this is probably 15, 20 years ago maybe, and it said, if you change your diet, go to a more plant-based diet, the word wasn't plant-based then, but a high-fiber diet, 68 to 72 grams of fiber a day, you can reduce or eliminate the need for most medication for type 2 diabetics. So here the ketogenic diet is saying, if you stop eating sugar, it's going to stabilize your blood sugar. Probably right. If you eat a high-fiber diet, the fiber is going to push the sugar through your colon and you get a slow release of sugar. And a lot of the sugar is going to get bound up in the, in the fiber and the fiber is going to block up your sugar receptor sites where sugar gets absorbed. So a high fiber diet works in three ways to stabilize your blood sugar and that too has been shown to help reduce or eliminate the need for most medications for type 2 diabetes. So ketogenic diet makes claims. I think a healthier way to do it is a higher fiber plant-based diet. But again, I'm giving you information today. What you do is up to you. It's not recommended for people with diabetes uh, to begin a keto diet without first checking with their doctors. Let the doctors know what you're doing so they know what to expect. During the first few days of the keto diet, your body will struggle to adapt. You may want to ease into this diet gradually by cutting back your carbs for a few days at a time. Now, in order to help your body adjust to the fewer carbs, you might want to go into this slowly. If you're going to do it, that's how I recommend it. Nutritional deficiencies. A, a low-carb diet, high-fat approach to the ketogenic diet limits the amount of food, types of foods you have, and entire food groups are eliminated. Things like beans, legumes, whole grains are out. And as many of the fruits and vegetables are also out, they have a lot of nutrients in them. Many of these food carries vitamins, minerals, and other nutrients. So you can't get these from other sources, and without them, you start to experience nutritional deficiencies. Again, the ketogenic diet is not a great long-term diet. It is not a balanced diet. Now, a diet that's devoid of fruits and vegetables will result in long-term what we call micronutrient deficiencies that can have other consequences. Keto diet can be used for short-term fat loss as long as it's under supervision. This is where things like Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source, I feel, should be mandatory. 
if you're going to start doing a keto diet because you've got to give the body the micronutrients. Now, in our office, we can do a blood work, we can draw blood, and we can do a micronutrient test. We can test to see what micronutrients are missing. Let me explain the difference between micro and macronutrients. Macronutrients, carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. Macro means big. You eat a lot of those. Micronutrients, you only need a little bit of them. Those would be the vitamins, the minerals, the nutrients. Those are micronutrients. And so you get those from fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. You're not going to get them if you're on this ketogenic diet. High protein, high fat, you're not going to get those micronutrients. You have to have them to work. I'm a chiropractor. My team of doctors are chiropractors. We work on the nervous system, the digestive system, and your diet. That's how we approach healthcare. And I find that that is by far the superior approach. In fact, every surgeon I know, orthopedic surgeon, neurosurgeon, they all say the exact same thing. Chiropractic is the most effective, least expensive treatment for pain. Everybody agrees. No one argues that point. The studies are clear as day. Most effective, least, least expensive treatment. Why wouldn't you do that for your treatment? It makes perfect sense. So we've got to be careful that we do structural work chiropractically, that we get the spine lined up, but you have to have the micronutrients in order for the nervous system to work. We're a sack of chemicals. And all we're doing is generating energy through the chemicals that we eat. When you deprive the body of these micronutrients, the body struggles. That's why Super Greens, an essential source, works so well for almost everyone, especially people on a diet. Okay? So another issue that may happen is constipation and bowel changes. If you eliminate most of the fruits and vegetables, uh, they can have other consequences too. These fiber-rich foods help you stay regular. Without them, you may experience bowel changes. You may have difficulty having bowel movements and eventually things like constipation. Now, the ketogenic diet does say eat a lot of uh, green leafy vegetables and fibrous vegetables like broccoli, asparagus, cabbage, and you consume fats like coconut oil, date ghee, which is a, which is a, a, a kind of a filtered form of butter, um, and always drink plenty of water. So that kind of compensates for that. But many times people that go on this ketogenic diet will come to me and say, Dr. Joe, I'm losing weight, but I'm just not going to the bathroom like I used to. You got to get the fiber. Fiber gets into your colon and swells up and then pushes food through your colon. Your colon's a muscle. And when the muscle gets stretched, it contracts. That's what moves things along the colon. Okay? And, and if your bowels aren't getting stretched enough because not enough fiber and water, they're not going to contract. Okay? It's called peristalsis. Peristalsis is the contraction of the muscles pushing everything through your colon. So if you're doing this and you do have constipation, you might want to consider Dr. Joe's intestinal formula. On the website, drjoe.com, all the supplements we talk about are on the website, drjoe.com. And on the website, we have Super Greens and Essential Source, which again is the minimum supplement you should be taking every day. And Dr. Joe's intestinal formula gently causes those muscles to contract so that the bowels can go back to normal function again. And with, it's funny because most of the nutrients I talk about, Super Greens, Essential Source, I want you to take long term. Intestinal formula, I don't want you to take long term. I want to get to the cause of why your bowels aren't working and then get off the intestinal cleanser. Don't become used to it. Lack of fiber, lack of water, and also pinched nerves. The nerves in the low back, if you have a pinched nerve, might cause back, hip, leg, knee, and foot pain. But that same nerve controls your colon, your sex organs, and your bladder. Now we might have gas, bloating, diarrhea, constipation, urinary problems, sexual dysfunction. The nerves in the low back control everything from the waist down. So if you have a bad diet and you have pinched nerves and the muscles become weak, you got a problem. And so the intestinal cleanser, we want to get to the cause of the problem and then get you off the intestinal cleanser. So the, again, we're talking about some of the negative side effects of the ketogenic diet. Loss of electrolytes. As ketosis begins, your body will start to dump stores of glycogen, which is stored energy. And that's a substance where your fats and muscles, in your fats and muscles, that carry excess weight. This will increase how often you urinate and that can lead to inevitable loss of electrolytes. And so electrolytes are essential for cardiac function and normal heartbeat. Once again, you need chemicals to make these things work. Loss of electrolytes such as sodium, magnesium, potassium will put the person on this ketogenic diet at risk for cardiac arrhythmia. So I've seen people do this already. They come in and they say, Doc, my heart's beating like crazy since I went on this ketogenic diet. It's because of the electrolyte issues. And that's not a good thing either. And folks, if you do have a healthcare problem, neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, acid reflux, heartburn, nutritional issues, I want you to make an appointment to come see us. In the Atlanta area, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. Folks, I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. Again, the website, drjoe.com. We'll catch you next time. Thanks for listening to For the Health Fit. Remember to subscribe to this podcast, and I'll help you naturally get well and stay well. 
You can also listen to and call into my radio show live Sunday evenings from 7 to 9 Eastern Time on WSBRadio.com and on the WSB Radio app.